This is the best that I could do with the homework. Ah, I'm going to have to hang up the robe. Call myself the guru. And this was my attempt. Uh, if you failed at the, the chair backing, fear not. Because um, it is actually more challenging than this one here, right? There was a few little things in there. I threw a curveball at you to see how you'd handle it. So if you failed at it, don't worry. Because this video is dedicated to solving um, something that you'll probably run into more times than you'd like, which is you have to model an object like this, which is at an arbitrary angle. Uh, it has a curve that needs to go all the way around it. It's got tapering. It's got like, it's a real nightmare for a lot of, uh, for a lot of modelers, right? And it's, it's understandably uh, more challenging than most objects. So we want to get this nice flat part going across there it needs to be slightly tapered it needs to be uh all lined up and needs to be needs to be totally flat and how can you do that when you're you know dealing with vertices at sort of arbitrary points and it's and then you end up like sort of in this mode like figuring like okay like oh this one i guess is kind of out of line and i pull it there and then i i do that and it just ends up just taking forever right so I thought I would dedicate a video to uh, solving some problems because that's what some people in the comments said. They said like, Andrew, why not, instead of doing like a perfect take, show some problems and how to solve them on the fly. So that's what this video is dedicated to. If you did the homework flawlessly, well then congrats. You get to just watch this video with the hands behind your head and uh, hopefully maybe learn something new for uh, the next challenge you uh, come across. So my first tip is to uh, make sure you're using matte cap view and uh, just trying some different views until you find something that will show you the form better than uh, the default studio. Cause like this isn't very revealing. It doesn't show you really how much is wrong. Um, and really like it depends on which object you're doing. It's not like there's one matte cap that I always use. Um, like for example, this one has like really great like vertical stripes, which is perfect for showing the flaws of this object, but it wouldn't be good for this object, right? It's just going, it's just the, the wrong direction. So in this case, I happened to find that this one uh, worked really well. Like it was, uh, I mean, it really just showed like how, like if this was a car, this would look like it had been in a wreck essentially. So this is great, very, very revealing. And it's exactly what you want to understand a form. Um, so uh, typically when I'm working with something like this, where uh, things need to be aligned on multiple axes, right? Um, like this needs to be aligned here, but it also needs to be aligned in the front view. I wanna be able to have a look at things in different axes. And you could, you know, split the view and then make this the front view, but then sometimes, you know, you move this and then you forget that this one is, and then you end up with two views doing nothing, essentially. Um, something that is better than this, it's just a hotkey, control, alt, Q. I should turn on my uh, screen keys tool because that frequently turns off by itself. It's not even on. Where is it? Where's my screen keys tool? Maybe it's not active because I'm in, uh, yeah, anyway, control alt Q. There we go. It's working now, finally. Uh, <laughs> control alt Q will, uh, will create this, like the top left, bottom left, and bottom right. These are locked. Uh, so this is the right view, this is the uh, front view, and then this is the top view, and you can't move those. Those are those are locked basically to that view. This one you have control over. Um, so what this means is like, when I'm working in top view, I can like zoom in and go like, okay, so this needs to be like, I need this to align to the back of the chair. This whole line there, um, I need to make sure is rotated at the right angle. So I'll move that out a little bit to about there. And it just very, it's so much easier working with um, all the axes open at once, rather than having to like go here, then go here. You can just like quickly like move your eye, you know, a few millimeters or whatever your eye is doing in its socket to, to look at a different view rather than having to like rotate around and stuff. So it's definitely, definitely handy. Uh, something else you can do, like in this case, you can see um, in the front view, I've got like these that look kind of wonky, right? Like these look kind of like, they should be straight, but they're not straight. Well, it, as it just so happens, I have something next to it, which is perfectly straight. So I can copy that by double tapping G and then hitting E, which will enable uh, even mode. Um, and so it'll match the layout of, in this case, the right one. Or if I hit F 
and that little red dot, as we talked about, will show you which side it's actually defaulting to. Um, it'll show you like, yeah, it's switching between them. So now that I've done that, I can see that I get mine, uh, I can get it now perfectly straight just by copying essentially the layout of that. So that's a really nice, nice little hack there. Now I've got this one, which is like one vertice here, which is like way out of line. Um, well, let's just assume it was really out of line just for the sake of this. Um, now you could, you know, like get your view like that so that these two points are like where it needs to be and then kind of like line this up with your eye. Something else you can do is uh, Alt S, which is the shrink fatten hotkey. Um, this will actually move it. If you're just selecting a vertice, it'll move it along its normal. Um, which just so happens to be perfect when you've got one vertice out of line in a uh, on like a flat surface. It just pulls that vertice uh, back to where it needs to be. So that's something that is uh, really, really convenient. Um, definitely make use of that, like this one here. Okay, so here's a case, like I don't know if this one is actually out of line or if it's actually in line, but this one here is out of line, you know. So this is where using Control Alt Q will really be uh, very revealing. So that's definitely wonky. It's definitely something shady going on there. Uh, I have a feeling that this guy's out of line. So I'm gonna bring him back, Alt S. All right, Alt S, bring that guy forward. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. I'll double tap G and I'll bring this guy up. Okay, cool. Now, here is an example. Um, let's just make this bigger so we can see it. So we have this vertice here, right? And it obviously needs to be higher up. Same with this guy probably. Um, now, if we were to just hit G and Z, because this object is like at a rotated angle, along with moving it up, I'm now also moving it this direction, right? Very, very slightly by moving it along the Z axis, right? Um, however, there is something that you can do, which uh, to be honest, I mean, I wish I could, tell you that I knew about this um, really early. Let me just turn off this annotation. Um, but I discovered this like a couple of hours ago because I was reading around the screen, like all the little hotkeys and things that are around here. But I'm moving this, um, you, so double tapping G, right? You'll know, will enable you to uh, move a single vertice or an edge along, uh, like it'll slide it, right? Um, so this is great, but you'll see that as it gets up to there, you can't go any higher than what it is. However, if you hold down Alt, you can. Da -da -da. So holding down Alt will disable clamping, which means that you can go beyond what the limitation of is there. So it'll continue on the correct path um, as far as I want it to go, basically. So it works according to what axes you were currently on when you were uh, before you, when you hit Alt. So if I'm on this axis here and then I hold Alt, now I can only move it along that. So make sure you get it right along the right one, then hold down Alt and then you can bring it up. And it's great, really, really convenient. And I'm so glad I discovered it uh, two hours ago. <laughs> you know, I've been using Blender for what, 15 years? Yeah, I discovered it, that's cool. Um, you discovered it basically at the same time as me. So that's good, don't feel bad. Okay, now here's a case where, you know, this, needs to be a straight line. And you know, I could go to the, you know, uh, straighten this, ooh, whatever. Or I could just do the lazy man's technique. Lazy man's technique, by the way, is usually the best technique. <laughs> it's just like rotate this to be almost straight, then go S, Y, or whatever axis you wanna straighten it on, and then zero. And now it's straight. And now I know it's straight, right? And then I can get it at the angle that I actually want it, uh, want it to be. So you can see we very uh, <clears throat> we very quickly um, straightened this out. And in fact, actually, if I was like <clears throat> not recording this tutorial, let me get a drink of tea here. I guess I should take out my tea bag because it's been in there for five minutes. Nice, it's gonna taste like battery acid. Um, my wife likes to leave it in there for like an hour. Can you believe that? She will drink tea that's been, a tea bag's been in there for an hour. It's like, you can't even stomach it. But she's like, no, I like it, it's strong. I'm like, it's not strong. It's acidic and you should throw it away. Anyways, marital problems, right? Uh, if I was modeling this like without the camera rolling, I would honestly, I would just take everything. I would f get it as straight as this. Um, and then I would like straighten this out. <laughs> I would straighten this out. Uh, I would straighten this out. And then I would straighten this one out, right? And then, 
I would go here and then I would rotate and I'd get it right. Um, that's honestly probably the fastest way to do it, but I thought I would just show you some little sh uh, hotkeys there to to do thing do some things. By the way, here's another idea. Okay, so if you hit N, as I told you when we're talking about rotating the leg, this will show you the rotation, right? So if we, um, you know, uh, if we cleared our rotation at this point, um, and then we, I'm just trying to see how can I explain this, uh, and then we rotated it, right, to be the exact angle of our chair here, okay? Like so. As long as we keep that, like if we don't clear our rotation here, what this means is, is that, you know, usually like, as I explained before, like if we were to move this up along the Z axis, it's also, it's, it's like ruining the straight line that we perfectly had there because it's now at an angle and it's working according to, like when I hit the Z axis, this blue line here you can see is the exact perpendicular to this blue line, which is the world Z axis, right? So this, this value here, transform orientations global, that's the default, that's what it's, you, you should normally be using things at. Um, but if you set it to local, now, because my object is rotated at 15 degrees, now my Z axis up and down is actually rotated at the correct angle. So that's really, really handy. It's almost like edge slide, you know, almost. Um, but yeah, it's really handy for something like this because yeah, it means you can get it at least like for a lot of things um, pretty right. As it just so happens, this line here happens to be at 15 degrees, but this line you can see is at a different rotation. So, you know, it wouldn't be perfect for everything, but it, uh, it can definitely come in handy when you need to uh, move something along a certain axis. There's also normal, which to be honest, I haven't found to be that helpful for something like this. Like, you know, move something along the Y axis for a normal, happens to be this or this, which I don't know, it just seems arbitrary to me. It doesn't really help me that much. Um, but anyways, all right, let's straighten this out and let's uh, let's finish this off. So I'm gonna set this to local and I'll move that along the X axis and that's pretty good. Um, is it pretty good? Control Alt Q. All right, let's get this final line straight. I would just go X, Y, clear it along the Y axis, and then let's straighten this out and then rotate this to be like that. And now it's tapering. <laughs> it's tapering along the front edge. It's tapering there. Um, and that's pretty good. And then I'll just take that and I'll slide that along a little bit just so that we get the angle there. In fact, this needs to be a little bit lower. Let's pull that down G and Z. And because I'm in local view, it should actually keep the angle that I'm actually at, which is good. And then look in solid view with the mat cap and let's see, okay. It's not as good as I thought. This is why having mat cap on is uh, very handy. There's something going on at the bottom here, which isn't exactly perfect. Probably this line here. Yeah, I would say it's that line. It's not as, uh, as bent. It should be following like this line here. So basically this is 15 degrees and then this would be a steep of 15, like 17 degrees perhaps. So my theory is, and if we look at the reference, perfect time to use reference, is that it would kind of like taper in, like each of these lines would be slightly, you know, closer to the other, you know what I mean? Like as the further it goes apart, the steeper the angle is. So kind of like as you sit in it, it's kind of like hugging you a little bit. I guess that's the theory, the theory of the chair. Um, all right, this other piece at the bottom here, a little problematic you know this is a fiddly tutorial and i'm sure some of you are really really annoyed that this was uh uploaded to the internet <laughs> but you asked for it jeez man you know some people some people just want to know like how in real time how do you actually solve problems and uh i'm hoping it's not infuriating that's the challenge you know of like uh tutorial education right is like you want to improve upon the classroom method. There's a problem here. Uh, you want to improve along the class, uh, uh, along the, the classroom method of just like, all right, open up your textbooks to pages, uh, whatever, um, and make it fun. But then if you just make it fun, then you can send a false message of like, things are always fun and easy. And then you could actually make somebody give up uh, because they think like, oh, I can't do it. Blender's not for me. For whatever reason, every time I start a new scene, I just get shattered and like overwhelmed with problems. Whereas 
these people on the internet, they all have their, like, it's all easy for them. So, you know, it's a bit of both. Maybe that's what live streaming is for. Maybe I should have live streams where I just uh, run into problems head on for like three hours at a time. <laughs> And then people in the comments go, yeah, I would watch that. And I'm like, yeah, but you're the only one. <laughs> Nobody else cares. Because that video will have like 100 views or something. I don't know. I'm rambling. Um, it's pretty close. That's pretty good. Um, I'd be pretty happy with this. This this little point here is always, uh, it's always annoying me. Um, but that's pretty good. You know, you might clean it up a little bit better. Um, actually, this is a little bit out of whack. <laughs> if you ever wanted uh, wanted a car tutorial, and you wondered why I haven't made a car tutorial, it's because uh, it would be this. It'd be this, but it would be like a 16-hour tutorial. CG Cookie did one once, and it was like 20 parts. And I was like, woof. Yeah, I'm not doing one. <laughs> you make your own car, guys. Learn Learn what we're doing here with the chair and apply that to a car. Anyway, thank you for watching uh, this part. We finished it. Look at that. We've, we've fixed all the little dilemmas with like millimeter push and pulls. And uh, now this this back of the chair here is like slightly pushing through. So, uh, you know, of course, we just got to angle it and move that around so that it matches the angle of the chair and then pull it in ever so slightly, I would guess. Oh, I didn't grab the whole, oh, see? That's what happens. I didn't grab the entire part of it so that like the bevel would be off. But anyways, rotate it, rotate it. Make it match the blueprint. And this is where you can use your, uh, whatever, your brain <laughs> and go like, is it close enough? Yeah, is it sticking through? All right, well, I just want to solve it sticking through then. Like the problem is, is that we're using a mirror modifier for this. So this should be at an angle so that this doesn't stick through, uh, which we'll do when we get to the next parts and we, uh, you know, get to UV unwrapping because we'll have to apply the mirror and everything at once. So uh, yeah, there we go. That is where we're up to. Thank you for watching this long, weird tutorial, um, but go ahead and join me in the next part. And we will be uh, making this little piece under there and we'll be adding some little screws to here um, and then getting it prepped for UV unwrapping after that. So click here and I'll see you in that video.